Swami Ananta, and we'd like to uh, welcome all of you, especially those of you who might be here for the first time through our Expanding Light programs or viewing online. Uh, we begin uh, tomorrow with our week of inner renewal, and uh, so I see that there are people here arriving already for that. and. It's a week of heightened spiritual teaching. Um, it's a blessing and spiritual opportunity uh, for all of us who live here at Ananda Village and uh, Ananda Everywhere viewing. So uh, thank you for being with us to share in that. I'd like to begin with a reading from Rays of the One Light. And these are written by Swami Kriyananda, uh, based in Yogananda's teachings. This is week number five, and it is the mystery of avatara, or divine incarnation. Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. The Bhagavad Gita in the fourth chapter states, as we saw last week, O Bharata, whenever virtue declines and vice predominates, I incarnate on earth. Taking visible form, I come to destroy evil and reestablish virtue. What is the mystery? of this divine manifestation. Great avatars such as Krishna and Jesus Christ are born as babies, even as we all are. They take human form and go through normal human experiences as they grow from childhood to adulthood. They eat, they play, they may seem to suffer sickness and disappointment like the rest of us. In what way are they different from other human beings? The important thing to understand is that even as they are like us, so are we also like them. Their realization can be ours too. They come on earth to show us our own divine potential. <clears throat> the difference lies not in the manner of their manifestation on earth, but in the consciousness with which they are born. All things are condensations, so to speak, <coughs> of the cosmic vibration, Om described by St. John's Gospel as the Word. 
Most human beings, however, are unconscious of their divine origin. The avatars, on the other hand, come consciously as manifestations of that divine reality. As the Gospel says in the first chapter, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. I would like to read a passage from Whispers from Eternity. This is a book that Yogananda gave us. And I would like to read a prayer called Prayer Demand for Removing the Cork of Ignorance. <laughs> you like that? Okay. <laughs> no more shall my consciousness remain bottled in this little vessel of flesh corked with ignorance. No more will I remain moving through the sea of cosmic consciousness night and day, years, decades, and how many incarnations so close yet never able to contact thy sea through the bursting vibration of cosmic sound and the surging of thy holy name, I have removed the cork of ignorance which so long separated me from thee, though we lived together so closely. Now my body consciousness will meet thy all-surrounding, all-pervading consciousness. No longer will I walk heedlessly in but never knowing and feeling thee. Thine image within shall meet thine image everywhere. By releasing the I-ness in me, I will know that I am thou, and that thou alone art the little egos of us all. <coughs> the mystery or topic of the avatars is a constant in human experience, as is the antidote, Maya. Constantly, the avatars come and try to remind humanity that we are one with the infinite joy, infinite light, this is why we did the chant, that we are not defined by our shortcomings and our smallnesses, but we are in fact, in the deepest level of reality, defined by the light of God within us, the love of God within us, the peace of God within us, the joy of God within us. We are like the avatars, and this is why Swamiji presented this this morning. We are like the great masters, Jesus Christ and Babaji, like the Buddha, like Lahiri Moshai, like the great masters of all time, the avatars, because of the simple fact that they do not have what Master referred to as the thwarting cross currents of ego. That's the whole problem, is that we have these thwarting cross currents of ego. And we think and we define ourselves and we hypnotize ourselves, and we play into this narrative in which we are the body, we are the emotions, we are the karma, we are this little thing, and we're limited, and it's very, very painful. And the avatars come repeatedly to say, no, you're more than that. Swami Kriyananda would echo Master's teachings repeatedly to us. Good morning, great souls. And we'd look around and say, well, who's here? Who's visiting, you know? <laughs> it's, it's the consciousness. But Kriyananda 
Swami Kriyananda spent time with Master as a disciple and listened closely to what Master was saying. What Master was saying was that this level of maya, this level of division, this level of limitation is the ongoing maya. This is an element of creation, but it is not the reality of creation. The reality of creation is the avatars. It is the light of God. It is perfect divine love. It is perfect peace. It is perfect calmness. It is perfect power, divine power, not worldly power. It is the Om, and it is the light of God. So what Swami Kriyananda is encouraging us is, as he always does, to follow Master's teachings and live like the avatars. Realize the only difference between us and the Masters is the consciousness. We are buying into, I am limited, I am this body, I'm an ethnicity, I'm a demographic, I'm an economic disaster. <laughs> <laughs> and the masters are saying, no, that's, that's a whole, whole strata at the bottom of the pond. And there's all this stuff, and, and the whole, our whole society, now and in the past, ha buys into that. And so God sends the avatars, the masters, all the way, I don't know the first avatar. I know Rama came thousands of years ago, and we know that the Buddha came, and Patanjali came, and Babaji, Krishna, Christ, there's many, many others. They come, they always have the same message. Tatwamasi, thou art that. Over and over again they say it. But the challenge is, how do we get there? And again, they have the same teachings. You have to leave behind this lower level. You're not going to find realization in the realm of Maya. You've got to lift your consciousness to that pure part of yourself. Now, we just did this for 10 minutes. We just stopped being bodies, <coughs> problems, unemployed, all these things. And we spent 10 minutes being the light at the point between the eyebrows. Pure light, unadulterated, pure light of God. This is the Atman. This is who we really are. We're not the role we're playing. We're that perfection. And when we meditate, we can become avatars for the period of meditation, if we meditate deeply. So how do we meditate deeply? We drop as much as you can, first the physical tension, because that ties us to the body, and drop the mental tension, the inner dialogue, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow at work when the boss comes in and sees I didn't do the reports, and you know, all that stuff. We have a whole bunch of that stuff. But for the period of time when you're meditating, you leave it with your shoes at the door of the temple. And you just go into that light, and you relax, and you focus, and you concentrate. Use the techniques that your guru has taught you. If you're a disciple of Yogananda, use energization, Hong Sa, Om, Kriya. If you're a Buddhist, Om Mani Padme Hum. If you're a Sufi, do the dance. But whatever your path of whatever avatar you're following, go into that light. And for that period of meditation, don't be a human being. Don't have cancer. Don't have whatever it is that's in this physical reality. Because that isn't a lasting reality. What is this consciousness flowing through my brain? Could it be other than divine? It is a rhetorical question. <laughs> we are free, and we have to hold it, and that's the avatars. They waltz into this movie, and the difference between them and us is they never think they're the body. They realize they're free. And so they live that way. And they do that, and what a fantastic opportunity this is to live so close to an avatar. Yogananda left in 52. So 65 years ago, there was an avatar walking around in California. He was in Los Angeles. He called it New Benares. Why? Because on their level, they see everything from up here. 
When Master saw the disciples, he saw light, silver light and golden light. Why? Because we should see silver light and golden light in our brothers and sisters. We should see this world as a movie starring God in everything. I'll tell you a story of something that happened a long time ago. In Brindaban, India, Krishna was living. He was an avatar. He was playing the part of, he played in many parts, really. He played an entire life. And from the moment he was born in prison and was freed from that till the time he left, he played all the parts of the human existence. He was a, a teacher. He was a warrior. He was a king. He was a cow herder. He was a baby. <laughs> Go, he was called Gopala when he was a baby. Then he was Govinda, keeper of the cows. Well, he was an avatar. He was trying to show us how do we live in that light, in this milieu that we live in. It's the same. In their village, in their town, they kept cows. They milked the cows. They didn't eat the cows. They milked the cows and made cheese and butter. So they, the boys would go out and they'd take care of the cows, as we do now. We have cows. We go and take care of the cows. We milk the cows. So Krishna would play with the boys and the girls. And, and he was just loved because he was an avatar. He was radiating divine love, but playing the part of a normal human being. And they loved him, and they were paying attention to him. So the creator of the universe, Brahma, was there. And he was thinking, why is all the attention going to this Krishna? I'm the creator. I'm Brahma. I'm the creator of the universe. What's with this? And so Krishna <laughs> kept on. And he said, you know, I've I, I got to put an end to this. I've got I to gotta teach these kids a lesson. He said, I'm going to take all the boys and girls, and I'm going to take all the cows, and I'm going to put them in a cave. I'm going to put them to sleep for a year. See how they much they like Krishna now. So he, he put them all to sleep. And Brahma is a very busy CEO. He's the CEO of the universe. And he has lots of things to do. So he went about his business of running the galaxies and the trillions of galaxies and things. And he came back. I wonder how that, that Krishna, I wonder how Brindaban's doing these days. He looked down. And nobody was missing the kids. In fact, there were boys there. And there was cows. And there was little gopis and gopas. And they were taking care of everything. And, and he thought, this is very strange. I, I, didn't I put them in that cave? And he went and looked in the cave. They were all asleep. He sort of scratched his head. And he noticed that the children were being kinder at Living Wisdom School. There was, <laughs> there was no yelling and screaming or pushing on the playground. And everyone was just going along and the, you know, the cow's milk was even sweeter. And he thought, this is very strange. I, and he was going back to his office at uh, Brahma headquarters, Satyalok, he lives in Satyalok. And he went and he started to go into the thing and the guard said, stop, excuse me, no going in there. And Brahma said, well, excuse me, Brahma, this is my office. I, and he said, I, I, I'm a little confused, sir, but Brahma's already in there. And I, I don't know who you are. You look exactly like Brahma, but Brahma's already in there. And Brahma realized that Krishna had taken the part of all, all the, the people. And he was playing the part of Brahma now. Oh. And so Brahma thought, oh no, I see. And he bowed to Krishna. He said, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm very sorry. I, my ego got the best of me, and I forgot. You're playing the parts. That's what's happening, my friends. Krishna is playing all the parts. And all the children were playing the part of Krishna. They were all avatars. It was Krishna, just Krishna, playing all these parts. And the parts of the cows, and everything. <laughs> what, what a Buddhist, I vow to free all sentient beings. Cows are sentient, but they have senses. So Krishna is playing the part of all of us. And the other way that we need to be avatars is to play the part that we have been given with the consciousness of Krishna, letting the part go forward. Let Krishna play your part. Let Yogananda play your part. And just let your ego get out of the way. Don't insist on it. Just let it happen. And you'll find there's more love. There's more kindness. 
and be an avatar every day. There's a very interesting story that happened once to Swami Kriyananda. There's a great saint who lived in India, Ramana Maharshi, and he had a disciple. His name was Yogi Ramiya. And Yogi Ramiya was uh, in India when Master went there in 1935. And Master spent time with him. Master said he was totally liberated. He was a great, great, great saint. <laughs> Master said, if I had spent one more half hour with Yogi Ramiya, I wouldn't have been able to come back to America. <laughs> It's just the consciousness and the joy was so great. So Swami Kriyananda, after Master's passing, Swami Kriyananda had the chance to go visit Yogi Ramiya. This is in the late 1950s or early 60s, when Swami Kriyananda was uh, the Vice President of Self-Realization Fellowship. But Swami Kriyananda went to meet him. And, oh my dear. So Swami Kriyananda went to meet Yogi Ramiya and he lived in a little village and there was a few boys there, a little teeny ashram and Swami Kriyananda could feel this immense spiritual power. He was a completely liberated soul and Swami Kriyananda said, excuse me, but why aren't you out lecturing? Why aren't you giving talks in Delhi and Mumbai and what, what's, <laughs> you're so free, you're, what a light you are. Are you writing books? Are you, you know, what are you doing? And Yogi Ramiya looked at Kriyananda and he said, God has done with this body what he will. And Swamiji got it. That Swamiji's assignment in life was to give lectures and to start the World Brother of Colonies and to write the songs and to spread the teachings of Kriya Yoga. But Yogi Ramiya's job, it wasn't his karma. He was playing the part that God assigned him. Krishna is going to play every part in the movie. He's going to play your part. And if your part is great, wonderful, play it well. If your part is very insignificant, and you're the part-time volunteer janitor at the Living Wisdom School, <laughs> that's great. Do it well. Let Krishna play it. Be an avatar. Be an incarnation. And if your life changes, and it does for all of us, and you are no longer the CEO of anything, or no longer this, or you are suddenly in a much different position, keep letting Krishna play it. Don't get in there with your ego. God has done with this body what he will. It's okay. Master had two liberated disciples while he was in the body. He had Rajasi and Sister. Yanamata. Rajasi was the CEO of a million things. He was an insurance tycoon and he was the head of a farming operation and all these things. And Master kept him there, playing that part. Krishna wants you to play this part, Rajasi. Be Krishna at work at these board meetings. And the other half liberated being was Sister Yanamata. And she slept in the washroom on a cot. She never gave service, she never wrote a book, she never gave lectures, she was liberated. Why? Because your karma determines what you need to do in the movie. Be that, be Lahiri, be Yukteswar. Lahiri worked in an accounting office after Babaji gives him the palace in the Himalayas and gives him Kriya, he goes back to the office and he totals what the fares are on the Bengal Nagpur Railway. Really? Yeah. Why? Because that's where we are. We work in offices. We have kids at home. We get laid off. We have disastrous situations in our lives. Does it mean you're not an avatar? No. It means play it. Play it with Krishna. Play it with Master. Let him play it through you. And just, God has done with this body what he will. Keep that meditation every morning and every evening. Be an avatar without any limitations. Swami Kriyananda referred to them as, the, as bundles of self-definitions. We've got these little things that we've written into our script. Well, I'm not very good at this, and, and I, 
gosh, I wish I had done this or that. They're all self-definitions. But if you're an avatar, does it matter? Does it matter what the Maya is? It doesn't matter. What matters is that you are that light, the light of God, that you are that peace. That's what is important. And we need to keep that in our consciousness foremost. Jyotish and Devi were talking to us yesterday saying, make your meditation central and deep. And then from that, remembering that you're Krishna, Krishna's playing this part, then go out and play your part. Play it with joy. Play it sweetly. Play it with the vibration that Master had. And we look at Master and the Great Ones, and we see that their consciousness was always there. Swami Kriyananda's consciousness was always there. He was the disciple of an avatar, and he played that part, and he lived with us. And we went to the store, and we went to the movies, and we found the World Brother Colonies, and we took Kriya initiation, and we did the human thing, the human experience, but always with the consciousness that Master is doing it. And that's how Kriyananda came at the end of his life, with everything done, he said, I didn't write the books. I didn't write the songs. I didn't start the community. Master did it through me because he let the veil pull back. Pull the veil away and let God do it. And in your own life, try to write a, a script that has the part that you're playing now played by Master, played by Krishna. Try to let, to see, I'm going to work. I'm going to serve. I'm drawing this inspiration from the wisdom of God. That's where I get my brilliant ideas. Don't hold on to your brilliant ideas. They're brilliant. You're the smartest cookie in the jar. Okay, great. But where'd you get it? Yana, God, where does the love you have for your children come from? Where does the love you have for your parents come from? Where does the love you have for this community come from? God. It's God flowing through you. It's not of your own creation. It's not of your own making. If we live in that consciousness, then we understand what Yogananda is saying. I killed Yogananda long ago. What a strange statement. But if we understand it, that there is no thwarting cross current of ego, then the movie becomes so much sweeter then everything flows, and God is with us. And we realize we're part of that. And then when you go back to meditate, at the end of the day, you'll feel, I'm nothing that happened today. I didn't do anything. Master did it through me. It's a wonderful feeling. You know, the Temple of Light is over there at the end of the meadow. It's all built now. It's all paid for. It's all finished. The materials are there. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. That's what happens. That's how Master saw it. It just is a different perspective. Live in that perspective. Don't live in the ego. It'll never work. Kriyananda said, oh, the music happened. The books happened. Communities happened. The blessings that he gave all of us, that's what he taught us, is live in God. Live for God. Live with God. Live with the avatars. And come to that place where you can say, I'm nothing. God is everything. God is flowing through me. And let that love flow through you in everything you do. If there's any part of your life you think you can't do, figure out a way where God can do it through you. And it's amazing how much fun it is and how much more beautiful it is. Peace gave us the morning. God bless you all.